Hi, my name is Eon. Welcome to my home office. This room is where I spent most of my days, working remotely for my employer. And it is a long and tube shape, it has this one window behind me, and I have to say, it is a bit dark and gloomy, especially in winter. In the summer, I get about one hour of sunlight directly into this room in the very early morning, and in winter, no sunlight at all. And now that the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer, I feel like I need to add more light to it. So my idea is to put up a curtain. That sounds counterintuitive, you might think right now, but this curtain will be an inverted curtain. It won't block out light, it will pass all the light through that comes from the outside, but also it will add to it. It will add more light than is coming from the outside. So let's go! Every curtain project starts with hanging the curtain rail. So I need to drill some holes in the wall and put some dowels in there. And then I can attach the holders that goes on the wall and uh, put on the holders uh, that will hold the curtain rail itself. They just screw on, that's pretty simple. And on top of that goes a tiny little thing that holds onto the rail and the rail just uh, clips in place then. As the curtain, I won't have a fabric. I have this net, this net with rather large uh, holes to pass through as much light as possible, but to still provide some structure. And this is how it looks. See, it doesn't block any light, but that's all the light passed through. Then I had to design a jig, a jig to hold uh, the ping pong balls. The ping pong balls will be the light itself, but to make holes in them, I need to, yeah, drill holes into them, and to do that, I need to make a small jig that holds the ping pong balls in place while drilling. I can take that off the 3D printer and then remove the supports that I needed for the 3D print. They just come right off. And now there is one more thing to pull out in here. That is where the drill goes in. Both sides fit together, that's great. And the ping pong ball also fits. Let's continue in the workshop. And these are all the ping pong balls that uh, need drilling. 50 of them. First attempt at drilling them. Let's see if that actually works. This looks shitty. But still I should try and see if it fits with the LEDs. It would work. Then let's continue. Second attempt. Okay, that plastic is damaged here. Probably still okay for what I'm doing. And then we rigged it up a little bit better, removed the wooden sheet, uh, mounted the vise in place, made some end stops, and that made the process rather quick. I think I spent like half an hour on drilling all of these balls. Let's put the lights in. Now the balls just need to be clipped onto the LEDs and because I bought the right size drill, 11.5 millimeters, they just clip on like that. So that's also rather quick and easy. This is how they all look now and let's pack them up to bring them home. I wasn't sure if I should include this part in the video, because here I am doing something you shouldn't repeat after me, you shouldn't do at home. I am here tinkering with 240 volt uh, line voltage, uh, I am hooking up the switch to the power cable of the PSU, and I'm not allowed to do that, I don't have the proper license, I'm no electrician. I did learn from my dad how to do this uh, properly, in a way that's uh, safe, not sure if it's according to spec or according to code, 
But um, I'm happy with it, I feel safe with it, and just don't do this at home. But this part I can certainly show. This is now the wiring of the 5 volt uh, part of it. This is a small ESP32 that I'm using to control the LEDs. And I am taking off the insulation of a very small cable that attaches to the ESP32 as a controller to the bulbs itself. Also, the LEDs need to get power from the PSU in the background there, the white brick in the top right corner. There is a red and a black cable and they just need to be hooked up to the LED strip. And then there are three more wires on the LED strip that need to be hooked up to the ESP32 to power the ESP and also to get the data for the LEDs in there. These three wires I am soldering now. So there goes some solder on, then some shrink tube. And then I'll repeat that with the next. First I'll drill the wires together, then I'll solder them. And then there goes some shrink tube over it. And then comes the last one of the three. First drilling it, soldering it, and then using some shrink tube on it. Let's see if this works. So this needs power. This the brown one is ground. Let's put this first. Ground goes over there. The red one is voltage in. And the orange one is uh, GPIO2. Okay, this is all hooked up and ready. The switch works. Let's see if the Wi-Fi works. Yes! Look, this is the wrong color. Let's put it to red. Okay. Blue works and red and green need to switch sides, I would say, yes. Configuration, LED preferences, <laughs> green, red and blue, okay, RGB, save, back, red, blue, green, awesome! Then we can put a housing onto this thing. That's the next step, I guess. Let's switch it off again. Time to mount this. So I'll string all of these LEDs through the net, at least at one point and the rest I just hook into the fishing net, like that. And now the other part, and that's it, I'm done. Let's see how it looks. It needs some more configuration, but then it looks like that. And I think this really adds to the room, it adds to the atmosphere, and I love that. Thanks for watching till the end, and have a good day. Bye bye.